Tristan da Cunha, the world's most isolated island. Tristan da Cunha is a remote group of volcanic islands in the South Atlantic Ocean. It is the most remote inhabited archipelago in the world, lying approximately 2,787 kilometers from Cape Town in South Africa, 2,437 kilometers from St. Helena, and 4,002 kilometers from the Falkland Islands. The territory consists of the inhabited island Tristan da Cunha, which has a diameter of roughly 11 kilometers and an area of 98 square kilometers, the wildlife reserves of Gaul Island, Inaccessible Island, and the smaller, uninhabited Metingill Islands. As of October 2018, the main island has 250 permanent inhabitants, who all carry British Overseas Territory citizenship. The other islands are uninhabited, except for the South African personnel of a weather station on Gaul Island. Tristan da Cunha is a British Overseas Territory with its own constitution. There is no airstrip on the main island. The only way of traveling in and out of Tristan is by boat, a six-day trip from South Africa. Hello guys, welcome to the channel and to another interesting video. If you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on any new updates from us. A stay on Tristan da Cunha is not your typical island vacation. There are no restaurants. There are no hotels. Credit cards are not accepted, the beaches aren't safe for swimming, and every month brings between 17 and 26 days of rain. Smack dab in the middle of the island lies a giant volcano. But Tristan da Cunha is enticing because it offers something that no other island destination can, the most extreme isolation. Geography Tristan da Cunha is thought to have been formed by a long-lived center of upwelling mantle called the Tristan Hotspot. Tristan da Cunha is the main island of the Tristan da Cunha Archipelago, which consists of five other islands including the Inaccessible Island, Nightingale Islands, Middle Island, Stoltenhof Island, and the Gaul Island. Inaccessible Island and the Nightingale Islands are 35 kilometers away from the main island, respectively, whereas Gaul Island is 350 kilometers. The main island is generally mountainous. The only flat area is on the northwest coast, which is the location of the only settlement, Edinburgh of the Seven Seas, and the agricultural area of Potato Patches. The highest point is the summit of a volcano called Queen Mary's Peak at an elevation of 2,062 meters, high enough to develop snow cover in winter. The other islands of the group are uninhabited, except for a weather station with a staff of six on Gaul Island, which has been operated by South Africa since 1956 and has been at its present location at Transvaal Bay on the southeast coast since 1963. Climate The archipelago has a wet oceanic climate under the Koppen system with mild temperatures and very limited sunshine, but consistent moderate to heavy rainfall due to the persistent westerly winds. Under the Trawartha classification, Tristan da Cunha has a humid subtropical climate due to the lack of cold weather. The number of rainy days is comparable to the Aleutian Islands at a much higher latitude in the Northern Hemisphere, while sunshine hours are comparable to Juneau, Alaska, 20 degrees farther from the equator. Frost is unknown below elevations of 500 meters and summer temperatures are similarly mild, never reaching 25 degrees Celsius. Sandy Point on the east coast is reputed to be the warmest and driest place on the island, being in the lee of the prevailing winds. Invasive Species The islands of Tristan da Cunha have a high significance of global biodiversity. Two of them, Ga and Inaccessible, form a UNESCO Natural World Heritage Site. This designation is largely due to the seabird population found there. The biodiversity of the island is vulnerable to the introduction of invasive species. Due to Tristan da Cunha's isolated archipelago ecology and the increase in tourism with cruise ships and research vessels, invasive species are a particular concern for Tristan da Cunha. The island's vegetation and mammal species are not equipped to defend against or control introduced species, increasing island vulnerability due to a lack of defensive behavioral mechanisms and slow generational output rates. Efforts to decrease and eradicate invasive flora, fauna, 
and marine species have been undertaken, including a program aimed at eradicating predatory invasive mice from Gall Island. Marine The largest no-take zone in the Atlantic and at 687,247 square kilometers, the fourth largest in the world, was designated on 13 November 2020. The marine protected area bans mining and fishing except the local lobster fishery. This ban is enforced by the UK government via satellite surveillance. According to the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds RSPB, the islands and surrounding ocean is one of the most pristine temperate ecosystems on the planet. Various species of whales and dolphins can be seen around Tristan from time to time with increasing sighting rates, although the recovery of baleen whales, especially the southern right whale, was severely hindered by illegal whaling by the Soviet Union in the aftermath of the 1960 volcanic eruption. The subantarctic fur seal can also be found in the Tristan Archipelago, mostly on Gull Island. The biodiversity of marine life is limited given the island's isolation, making identifying the impacts of invasion difficult. While much of the marine life is unknown, there has been an invasive species identified in the waters around the islands. Economy The island has a unique social and economic structure, in which all resident families farm and all land is communally owned. Outsiders are prohibited from buying land or settling on Tristan. Besides subsistence agriculture, major industries are commercial fishing and government. Major export industries are the Tristan Rock Lobster Fishery, the sale of the island's postage stamps and coins, and limited tourism. Like most British overseas territories, it was never a part of the European Union, but was a member of the EU's Overseas Countries and Territories Association. The Bank of St. Helena was established on St. Helena and Ascension Island in 2004. This bank does not have a physical presence in Tristan da Cunha, but residents of Tristan are entitled to its services. Although Tristan da Cunha is part of the same overseas territory as St. Helena, it does not use the local St. Helena pound, instead using the United Kingdom issue of the pound sterling. Transport The remote location of the islands makes transport to the outside world difficult. Tristan da Cunha has no airstrip and is not generally accessible to air travel, though the wider territory is served by St. Helena Airport and Rath Ascension Island. Fishing boats from South Africa service the islands eight or nine times per year. The RMS St. Helena used to connect the main island to St. Helena and South Africa once each year during its January voyage, but has done so only a few times in the last years, in 2006, in 2011, and most recently in 2018. In the same year, the RMS Street Helena was withdrawn from service. Three ships regularly service Tristan da Cunha, with typically fewer than a dozen visits a year. Other vessels may occasionally visit the island. The harbor at Edinburgh of the Seven Seas is called Calshot Harbor, named after the place in Hampshire, England, where the islanders temporarily stayed during the volcanic eruption. Tourism Unlike St. Helena with its airport, hotels, and restaurants, due to its remoteness, Tristan da Cunha has a very small tourism industry. Tourists are welcome, and the hospitality of the population is famous, but as it can only be reached by South African fishing trips on rough seas with limited vacancies, a trip must be planned months in advance, and only after a mandatory visit request is approved by the island council. Occasional boats or cruises may include a short visit to the island in their itinerary, but as there is no deep harbor, setting ashore is highly dependent on the maritime conditions. With all these limitations, and in spite of the spectacular natural landscapes, visiting the territory is an attractive challenge for more adventurous travelers who can afford the time and money to get there. All visitors staying on Tristan must have a confirmed and fully paid return ticket, health insurance to include cover in case of medical evacuation to Cape Town, and sufficient funds to cover their entire stay. There are no hotels on the island. A visitor can rent a guest house or stay in a private home on a full board basis. There is a tourism post office that sells souvenirs that might take months to arrive if ordered online. Communications The ITU has assigned telephone country code plus 290 for Tristan da Cunha, 
However, residents have access to the Foreign and Commonwealth Office telecommunications network provided by Global Crossing. This service uses a London 020 numbering range, meaning that numbers are accessed via the UK telephone numbering plan. Satellite delivered internet access arrived in Tristan da Cunha in 1998, but its high cost initially made it almost unaffordable for the local population, who primarily used it only to send an email. The connection was also extremely unreliable, connecting through a 64 kilobit per second satellite phone connection provided by Inmarsat. The government and Tristan da Cunha Association jointly run the island's official website with all practical information, news, and facts about the island. Amateur radio operator groups sometimes conduct the expeditions on the island. One group operated as Station ZD9ZS from September to October 2014. Government, Demographics, Language, and Education There are no political parties or trade unions in Tristan. Executive authority is vested in the king, who is represented in the territory by the governor of St. Helena. As the governor resides permanently in St. Helena, an administrator is appointed to represent the governor in the islands. The administrator is a career civil servant in the foreign office, selected by London, who acts as the local head of government and takes advice from the Tristan da Cunha Island Council. Tristan da Cunha recorded a population of 243 in the June 2021 census. The only settlement is Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. The current residents are thought to have descended from 15 outside ancestors who arrived on the island on various dates between 1816 and 1908. Now all of the population has mixed ancestry. In 1963, when families returned after the evacuation due to the 1961 volcanic eruption, the 200 settlers included four Tristan da Cunha women who brought with them new English husbands. Tristan da Cunha's isolation has led to the development of its own English dialect. In popular writing, it has been described by the writer Simon Winchester as a sonorous amalgam of home counties lockjaw and 19th century idiom, African slang, and Italian. Education is fairly rudimentary. Children leave school at age 16, and although they can take GCSEs a year later, few do. The school on the island is Street Mary's School, which serves children from ages 4 to 16. The Naval Station had established a school building during World War II. Tristan students doing post-16 education receive assistance from the Tristan da Cunha Association Education Trust Fund and typically do so in the United Kingdom and South Africa. Sports Football, cricket, and baseball were all historically played on the island. It has been reported that football was introduced to the locals in the 1920s by Reverend Henry Rogers, and it remains the island's favorite sport. So, there you have it, guys everything you need to know about the islands of Tristan da Cunha. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Don't forget to share with a friend.